Live from Case at 12, the news at noon starts right now. Late breaking this noon, Uvalde CISD says two people within the district have been placed on administrative leave. They are Ken Muller and Uvalde CISD Police Officer Lieutenant Miguel Hernandez. Muller elected to retire. The district also says it has suspended all activities of the Uvalde CISD Police Department. However, it's not clear how long that will last. In the meantime, officers that are currently employed by the district will fill other roles. The district has requested the Texas Department of Public Safety to provide additional troopers for campus and extracurricular activities. We'll have more on this developing story tonight in the news at 5 and 6. And San Antonio police say a man who was asleep on a sidewalk never had a chance when a car came barreling toward him. He was hit by the car and killed. This happened near I-10 and Wurzbach Road. Katrina Weber tells us why police say this may not be completely due to driver error. From what police say, it appears right now that this was just a horrible accident. A driver losing control and then hitting someone who happened to be right in her path. Police say the driver was on her way to work before 6.30 this morning when she took the turnaround under I-10 at Wurzbach Road. Investigators believe she hit the brakes, which then locked up, and she lost control of the car. They say she jumped the curb and hit a man who was asleep near a pillar. He died from his injuries. Police say he was not carrying any identification, but appeared to be in his 50s. Investigators spent some time questioning the woman who had been behind the wheel and was obviously shaken. Then they let her go. Police say right now this driver is not facing any charges, but they say that this crash is still under investigation. Reporting from the northwest side, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. And now to the latest in a shooting investigation on the northwest side. Police say a man is still in critical condition after being shot. San Antonio police found him around 2.30 this morning at an apartment complex near Loop 410 and Evers Road. They say his girlfriend told them he had just sent her a text message telling her he had made it home after a night out with friends. She says a short time later she heard arguing and gunshots. Then she says she opened her door and her boyfriend fell inside. That man was taken to a hospital. Police do not know who shot him or why. And a family is without a home this noon after flames broke out late last night. Fire crews say a man heard popping noises while he was home in the 8600 block of South Zarzamora. And that's when he noticed his home was on fire. He and three pets made it out safely and two other family members were not at home at the time. Fire crews say that home was destroyed. Tobin Hill area residents and businesses along the St. Mary Strip are expecting an update on construction today. Stakeholders are invited to a public meeting held by the city's public works department and the construction company Spaglass. This is the first of many weekly updates. It will be held at the Rumble at 4 this afternoon. The community has been at odds over the city's proposals to limit residential parking and possible noise ordinances, changes that could impact the nighttime business along that area. Now, it's the largest campaign in the university's history, and now UTSA is kicking off the next phase of its $500 million fundraising campaign. The university says it has already raised $311 million. Donations have come in from philanthropists and companies like USAA and Dell Technologies. UTSA plans to use the funds to support student success, strategic growth, and to fund its efforts as a public research university. A local teen is the first student from San Antonio to be selected for the USA National Debate Team. Tiffany Huetas shares his journey and the challenges he overcame. Hey, Senator, are people likely in the status quo to trust the other side of an issue? Years of preparation and dedication led Anish Biram to this moment. I just remember hearing, um, would you like to debate on behalf of the USA? And I, I was, I think I lost my mind a little bit. The senior at TMI Episcopal was chosen from thousands of debaters from across the country to represent USA at competitions. So I'm really, really excited and honored and very grateful for the chance to be able to debate at this level. Anish started his debate journey in middle school, but his interest grew during the pandemic. And although that brought some challenges, it didn't stop Anish from reaching his goal. Because of the pandemic, 
I think we went through four or five debate coaches. So I actually went through a period of about a year and a half where we didn't actually have a coach or we didn't have a teacher. Um, so I'm primarily self-taught um, as a debater from YouTube and from various online resources. Anisha's mother, Dr. Amita Patnik, is filled with pride and joy. Not only has he acquired sort of the intellectual knowledge base, but he has essentially kind of come into his own. He's really blossomed through debate and become this individual who is self-sufficient. We just couldn't be prouder and we've done everything we can to support his uh, participation in this and, and on Team USA above all. I'm really, really grateful to um, my parents and everyone who's been there to help me learn about the economy or politics or how to give a speech for three minutes without stuttering and tripping over myself. Anish has participated in about 50 tournaments across the country and he looks forward to possibly competing in Vietnam. Five of the 12 are selected to go to Vietnam in the summer to compete at the World Schools Debating Championship, which is um, like the Debate Olympics. Anish dreams of going into law or business. For now, he's a teen with a passion for debate. When do the ends justify the means? It feels really incredible. It's been one of my dreams for a very long time to be able to debate for my school, my state, my nation internationally. Tiffany Huertas, KSET 12 News. Tomorrow, people in the community will come together to pay tribute to patients, survivors, and those who lost their lives to blood cancers. The Leukemia and Lymphoma Society is hosting its annual Light the Night event. This year, the honored hero is seven-year-old Jarvis Henderson. He was diagnosed with leukemia when he was just five years old and just completed treatments this past Saturday. His mom says the Leukemia and Lymphoma Society helped lessen the financial burden for their family and made resources more available to them as Jarvis went through treatment. Light the Night starts tomorrow night at 6 at Hemisphere. If you can scan the QR code on your screen, you can join our team. Also happening this weekend, a San Antonio favorite is back. The Barroqua and Big Red Festival will take place for the first time since the pandemic started. So it starts tomorrow at four in the afternoon and the fun continues on Sunday. You can buy tickets now. They're $10 for adults. Children 12 and under are free. The festival is at the R&J Music Pavilion on Pleasanton Road on the city's south side. You can find all this info and more on our website at kset.com. And we're watching what's going on in the tropics. Some development there. Plus, we've got clouds rolling through. We'll let you know when those move out and what about rain chances coming up the latest in your forecast another week of big game coverage is underway clark played johnson last night larry has the action later in sports President Biden is stressing that Russian leader Vladimir Putin is significantly underperforming in his war against Ukraine and doesn't have a way out. And he may want to turn the war around by using a nuclear weapon. ABC's M1 reports this comes as Russian men continue to flee the country to avoid Putin's military draft to even showing up on U.S. soil in Alaska. In his gravest warning yet about the risk of a nuclear conflict, President Biden saying Russian President Vladimir Putin's threats to use tactical nuclear weapons pose the greatest prospect of Armageddon since President Kennedy and the Cuban Missile Crisis. President Biden in an off-camera fundraiser saying he knows Putin well and that he is not joking when he talks about potential use of nuclear weapons or biological or chemical weapons. The White House quick to downplay Biden's remarks, saying the administration has seen no indication Russia is preparing to imminently use nuclear weapons against Ukraine. It comes as President Biden believes Putin is growing more desperate on the battlefield after a series of Ukrainian military successes in recent weeks. But as Russian troops are being forced to retreat in the south and east, new evidence of alleged war crimes are emerging. In a basement in the eastern village of Piski Rutkivsky, Ukrainians say they were beaten and shot. Just miles away, a torture pit buried in a shallow grave where two bodies were found handcuffed. In Yampil, Ukrainian soldiers on the hunt for fleeing Russian troops. A lot of weapons, they stay here. A lot of weapons. Uh, they left I, I, behind. I, I, yes. The horrors of war giving rise to hundreds of thousands of Russian men fleeing the country to avoid Putin's military draft. 
two crossing the Bering Strait, seeking asylum on a remote Alaskan island, now in the hands of U.S. federal officials. This was a surprise to us. Who knows what's going to happen in the future if more individuals from uh, Russia are trying to, uh, you know, tend to leave Russia through the uh, Bering Straits. Those two Russian nationals are now in the city of Anchorage, being screened and vetted. Diplomats at the Russian embassy in Washington say they plan to hold a phone call with them to provide any necessary assistance. M. Wynn, ABC News, Washington. We're taking a look outside with Life Cam. We know we have a lot of events this weekend. Light the night and also the Barbacoa and Big Red Festival. How's the weather going to be holding up? Jonathan, I think it's going to look really well. I mean, it'll look really good this weekend. We've got a, a lot of uh, comfortable temperatures, I think, headed our way. We will see a little bit more humidity, but that holds off until next week. The aquifer is also holding steady. It's at 630.2. And in the pollen count, ragweed's still the problem. It's moderate at 260. Molds are low at 320. We've had a few light showers on radar today. A lot of cloud cover, too. We'll let you know when that's shifting up. Coming up. And beautiful blooms are the norm in the spring, but the work to get there starts right now. For the most part, September through October is the best time to start planting wildflower seeds in South Texas. Lee Marlowe is a sustainable landscape ecologist for the San Antonio River Authority. She seed to soil contact is very important. If you're doing a small area, sprinkling it around, maybe walking around on top of it after you've done it, maybe light raking it is the best way to do it because you don't want to bury those seeds. And Marla says burying the seeds too deep may cause them not to germinate. For more ways to help wildflower gardens thrive, including how often you should water the plants, head to ksat.com and watch Sarah Acosta's full on the subject. And if you're looking to shop for seeds, we have all the information you need as well. And I know like going outside may be good What? For planting, I guess, you know, That's maybe right. early in the morning, in the evening, still getting a little warm in the afternoon, though. Yeah, I mean, it's it's OK for planting, but we've got to get the rain. Like that's <laughs> that's uh, an issue that we're really having. I, I know my plants are struggling. I don't know about yours, but uh, we need some rain back in the forecast. We had a little bit today. It was very, very light, though. I want to show you the radar right now. We have a few returns. Uh, you can see here, but most of this is not reaching the ground. And if it is, it's nothing more than a couple sprinkles. Uh, we didn't record any rain here in San Antonio. Uh, or a few showers down to the south of us earlier. Still some rain around Corpus Christi, but we're not expecting any today. It's really just the cloud cover that is impacting our forecast at the moment. And you can see all the clouds trying to thin out a little bit here across San Antonio, so you may see some filtered sun, but that back edge of the cloud cover still out to the west. So we've got some more time here underneath these clouds, and that means temperatures will be a little bit cooler today. Really pretty comfortable right now if you're stepping outside. Here's the big picture and it does look pretty busy. It's just that we're for the most part missing out on the rain. There is some showers down there across deep south Texas. You'll notice some rain up across the Texas Panhandle and in parts of New Mexico. Reason for that, we have an upper level low out to the west spinning that's bringing some energy in and it's bringing some Pacific moisture in and that's what we have streaming overhead. Time lapse shows all that cloud cover. It's been around most of the day. We've hardly seen any sun at all and temperatures as a result, only at 79. Westerly winds at about six miles per hour. And most places are in the 70s. You'll find a few 80s here and there, Pleasanton and New Braunfels. But 73 Kerrville, 79 at Hondo, 74 in Uvalde. And with these numbers here at noontime, I don't think we get much warmer than the mid 80s this afternoon. And that's if the sun does indeed pop out a little bit later this afternoon. 78 Holota, 77 Bernie Stage, 77 Canyon Lake. And dew points are trying to creep up a little bit, so we're starting to see some slightly higher moisture levels with a dew point of 66 down there at Stenson. You'll start to feel that a little bit. 62, the dew point here at the airport. Uh, so these numbers coming up slightly, and they'll stay somewhat elevated over the weekend, but we'll notice the humidity even more as we head into next week. There's a case that 12 hour forecast. We'll keep it mostly cloudy going into this afternoon and this evening before clouds do indeed clear out some overnight and uh, going into tomorrow morning. Dew point trend. Well, dew points, as I said, do start to creep up here. And by midweek, we're looking at some muggy conditions potentially, but then by Thursday, 
we may see a frontal boundary coming through, and that would drop off dew points quite significantly. The question will be, will we get any rain out of these fronts? The first one, there's a front across Texas right now. It doesn't do anything for us. So temperatures stay in the 80s both Saturday and Sunday. But it's this next front I want to watch. And by Wednesday, out ahead of it, it's going to be awful warm. And then that cooler air starts to potentially come in Thursday and Friday. There's still some questions on timing here. So it could hold off until Friday. Either way, we're hoping for a little bit of rain with it. And we'll keep you posted on how that ends up. Uh, in the uh, Caribbean, we do have a new tropical storm. That's Julia. Winds are at 40 miles per hour, gusting to 50. This is going to become a hurricane, likely striking Nicaragua with winds at 85 miles per hour, a Category 1 hurricane. And then this takes a little bit of a turn to the north. If some of this moisture can work north and interact with that front, that would be great. That would spell some rain chances for us. But the timing is going to work out here. And again, that's still in question. So 89 degrees Saturday, 88 Sunday, 88 Monday. And then uh, near 90 next week, there are some small rain chances in there Wednesday and Thursday, guys. All right. Well, at least we have a chance. There's a chance. Thank, Thank you, Justin. you, Justin. Now we're heading over to the world of sports with Larry, the all-knowing man when it comes to sports. <laughs> it's homecoming season, Larry, and we know the Spurs had a big game last night. The Spurs did have a big game because they were looking to bounce back from that ugly game preseason loss out at the Houston Rockets about four days ago. Last night they played the Orlando Magic at home. They looked much, much better compared to that Houston game, but Pop doesn't want to talk about it. Plus, in high school football, it was homecoming for the Burbank Bulldogs coming up. The Spurs lost at home last night to the Orlando Magic 102-99 in their second preseason game. Now this one saw two ties and four lead changes. The Spurs led by as many as 19 points in the second frame, while the Magic's largest lead was five. Doug McDermott led the Spurs with 14 points off the bench, while Keita Bates Diop led the Spurs starters with 12 points in just 18 minutes. Devin Vassell and Trey Jones each scored 11 points for the Silver and Black. The Spurs led 83-76 after three quarters, but struggled in the fourth, turning it over eight times and making just seven of 19 shots and that turned out to be the difference. Yes, they played much, much better compared to their 38 point loss in Houston, but Coach Pop didn't want to hear any of that. The Houston game is irrelevant. That's the second time you brought up Houston. I don't care if we won or lost against Houston. Uh, all that matters is tonight and the next game and that game. So that, that doesn't affect anything we're doing today. Uh, but of course they competed well. We turned it over too much. 35 points off turnovers and that's you know that's going to make it tough but uh, a lot of guys played better than the other night we were more physical uh, we moved better on offense so I thought that they got better. Spurs will continue the preseason Sunday night at six at home with the New Orleans Pelicans. Time for a big game coverage from last night to see number six Clark taking on the Johnson Jaguars. Second quarter tied at seven. Johnson quarterback Ty Hawkins finds Alejandro Tavares on the slant for a touchdown and a 14-7 lead. But the Cougars claw back. The handoff goes to Chris Gertz and he goes right through the Jags D tying the game at 14. The final from Ferris 31-28. Johnson wins. Sotomayor hosting Harlan at the Gus. Wildcats ball. Quarterback Logan Plake drops back and fires to a wide open Jace Cano for the 19-yard touchdown. It's 7-0 Wildcats. The Hawks answer back. Noah Ferris play action pass, and he's going deep downfield to Tupac McClure, and it's a biggie, a 57-yard touchdown. That ties the game at 7, and Harlan takes it 42-7. Over at the Rock Pile, number 4, Alma Heights, playing the Jefferson Mustangs. First quarter, Mules on the move. Quarterback Conley McKenna swings it out to Rhett Anderson, who gets by the first defender, then races down the sideline on his way in for a 31-yard score, 7-0 Mules. And Alamo Heights rolls 56 to 6. Homecoming for Burbank as they host McCollum at the SAISD Sports Complex. McCollum down 14 7, but not for long. Quarterback Justin Rodriguez play action pass to Jonathan Longoria over the middle, and he lowers his shoulder and plows his way in for the game tying touchdown. That was awesome, but. Burbank wins a close one, 28-21. In Converse, we had Wagner hosting MacArthur. First quarter, Mac up 3-0, but the Thunderbirds about to make some noise. On the Mac 7-yard line, handoff goes to Jeremiah Cherry, who sees the lane and takes it all the way in for the score. They'd go for two, didn't get it, 6-3 Wagner, and the Thunderbirds win big, 61-12. Well, lots of exciting <laughs> high school football. Right. Got to be at those games. Yes, and you'll be busy tonight. I'll be busy tonight going to Poth. Uh, Floresville and Fall City. Not in that order, but that's where I'm going to be tonight. All right. Thank you, Larry. Out for you got it. And Halloween's around the corner, and a lot of folks have candy on the brain. A look at the top-selling treats in Texas, one of which isn't sweet at all.
More than a week after Hurricane Ian made landfall here in southwestern Florida, the cleanup and rescues continue. I'm Rena Roy in Fort Myers, and I'll have the latest coming up. And you today at five, have you bought baby formula within the past five years? Or maybe you know someone who has. Turn out it could be in for some free money. Our Merlin Moritz walks us through the process today at five after entertainment tonight. And back to that late breaking news we brought you at the top of the hour. Uvalde CISD says two people within the district have been placed on administrative leave. They are Ken Mulder, Moeller and Uvalde CISD Police Officer Lieutenant Miguel Hernandez. Moeller elected to retire. Now the district also says it has suspended all activities of the Uvalde CISD Police Department, but it's not clear how long that will last. In the meantime, officers that are currently employed by the district will fill other roles. The district has requested the Texas Department of Public Safety to provide additional troopers for campus and extracurricular activities. We'll have more on this developing story tonight on the News at 5 and 6. Now, people in Florida who evacuated to escape the wrath of Hurricane Ian now heading back home. ABC's Rena Roy reports people are working to survey the damage while still missing some basic services. It's being called the largest urban search and rescue response in Florida state history. Crews still going door to door looking for any survivors more than a week after Hurricane Ian made landfall in southwestern Florida. On Sanibel Island, Pamela Brislin found her neighbor waiting for help after her husband died. I went to check on the neighbor's wife and she was alone. And he would, had been, they had put him on a ta picnic table and wrapped him up and, and she was waiting and alone. So I sat with her for a few hours until the police arrived. So far, some 90,000 structures have been searched. The leading cause of death from this powerful storm, drowning, according to officials. For those who did make it out, a long road ahead. Rita Easter helping her elderly parents whose home flooded. We just don't have any help. Oh, It's hard. It's hard. Like more than 80% of Florida residents, her mom and dad did not have flood insurance. More than 100,000 still without power, most of them in hard hit Lee County. We have no water. We're here to take a shower. We've been yeah. going to the amenity center to get water out of the pool so we can flush our toilets. Officials said most would have their power back by today, but for the hardest hit areas, it could be much longer. Rena Roy, ABC News, Fort Myers, Florida. The fever hasn't broken yet for the U.S. job market. The federal government reports the economy added 263,000 jobs in September. That's slightly higher than the 250,000 economists estimated. However, the robust headline number marks the second month in a row of falling totals, pointing to a labor market slowdown. Meanwhile, the unemployment rate fell back to 3.5 percent from the 3.7 percent. And a quick look outside with live cam. We're now at 80 degrees. We still have that cloud cover, but just wondering how those games are going to be this evening. They're going to be great. They're going to be great uh, with this cloud cover. It's helping to keep temperatures down a little bit, so it'll be really nice at most of the games. Uh, maybe a little bit more humid than the last couple of Fridays, but still not bad. I want to show you a picture here on KSAC Connect, and this is the, the sunrise this morning. These clouds, man, they made for some incredible colors. Uh, this is just one of several pictures we got in on KSAC Connect, and we do appreciate it. Uh, they say they're on their way to fish in Matagorda. It's a great weekend for that, too. Uh, thank you, Kathy, for sending that picture in. Let's look at the cloud cover, and you can see it's uh, fairly expansive here across South Texas today. We do have some light returns, some light showers showing up in spots. Now, most of this is not reaching the ground. If it is, it's nothing more than a few sprinkles, maybe around the Gonzales area uh, along I-10. We've had a few light returns move over San Antonio, but nothing reported. It's just been the cloud cover. And that back, back edge of the clouds, by the way, is here in the hill country. So places like Rock Springs and Del Rio, you're getting quite a bit of sun at this hour. And eventually we'll see a bit more sun or at least some clearing here in San Antonio later today. You can see where that line is just to the west of Uvalde. You get west of Uvalde along Highway 90 there and the sun pops out. Let's talk about that for, uh, football forecast this evening. Temperatures at halftime will be right around 80 degrees, so that's really not bad at all. Sunset is at 712. You can expect mostly cloudy skies as well, guys. 
Austin overnight. The Justice Department made it clear to former President Donald Trump's lawyers that it still doesn't believe Trump returned all the presidential records he took when he left the White House. The development was first reported by the New York Times. It's not clear where any remaining documents might be. Trump continues to blast the investigation as politically motivated. The Washington Post is reporting that federal agents believe they have enough evidence to charge Hunter Biden with tax crimes and lying on a federal form when he purchased a gun. The Post is citing anonymous sources. It says the president's son's case has now moved one step closer to a potential conclusion. The Post says U.S. attorney in Delaware is set to decide whether to proceed. The federal investigation of Hunter Biden began in 2018 and centered around his taxes and his business dealings overseas, going all the way back to when his father served as vice president under President Obama. That includes Hunter Biden's work with a Ukrainian natural gas company. Biden's lawyer fiercely criticized the leak in a statement to the Washington Post. In April, the White House said the president was confident that his son did not break the law. And it's another big night for high school football. We have some of the best games that you can stream on the BGC app later in sports. A British artist is taking dueling to a whole new level. He's made more than a million dollars from it. And now his art is even inspiring his home decor. Halloween is now a few weeks away and people are dishing on their favorite candy. Now, according to CandyStore.com, Texans love Starburst, Reese's Peanut Butter Cups, and Sour Patch Kids. The site has an interactive map showing which sweets each state favors. Nationwide, the most popular Halloween candy, that was Reese's Peanut Butter Cups, followed by Skittles in second place and M&M's taking third. Starburst and Hot Tamales rounded out the top five, followed by Sour Patch Kids, Hershey's Kisses, Snickers, Tootsie Pops, and Candy Corn. The National Retail Federation estimates U.S. consumers will shell out about $3.1 billion on Halloween candy this year. Of money. <laughs> Lots of money. And instead of being sent to the principal's office, students at a school in Washington State sent their principal to the roof. Now, Walt Clemens, the leader of Spokane Valley Summit School, made a wager. If students and their parents could raise $50,000 for the school, he'd spend the day on top of the building. Now, that apparently was too good to resist as $60,000 was collected. Clemens kept his word, and on Tuesday, he had a sky-high view of his campus. Now, fortunately for him, the weather did cooperate. And the money will be used to pay for school trips and activities. Many people doodle from time to time, but one British artist turned it into a career. CNN's Jeannie Mose shows us how he lives and dreams in doodles. What do you call a guy who makes a living doodling? Hello there, I'm Mr. Doodle. Mr. Doodle, aka Sam Cox, is a British artist who covers everything from murals to his Tesla with doodles. But what does Mr. Doodle dream of? Covering his entire house in doodles, we mean everything. This is a guy who's been doodling since he was three or four, and now he's finally living in a house bedecked with doodles inside and out. It took two years to accomplish... My ultimate lifelong dream. It's his master doodle. What was the hardest thing to doodle over? Uh, I think probably um, the toilet was quite difficult. Um, drawing around the toilet, getting all the in, inside it. These days, he's flush with success. One of his pieces sold for almost a million bucks. Did you doodle your outfit? Yes, I did, yeah. And he sells merchandise. He credits street artist Keith Haring as a major influence. Online commenters had mixed feelings. Super cool project, but it would kill me living there. And do you ever wake up and just wish there were like a solid gray wall there? <laughs> um, no, um, I, I really love living within the doodle world. Uh, it makes me very happy. 
In his video debuting his doodled home, there's breaking news. Doodles consuming entire planet. Maybe the planet he's on. Genie Mose, CNN, New York. Oh my goodness, that's a lot. Absolutely incredible. I was thinking it <laughs> resembled a lot of yes. pairing. Yes. Definitely yeah. inspiration right there. We can right only there. doodle some rain. I think that's pretty cool. Uh, that would be nice. <laughs> uh, we could definitely use the rain. It is. It felt. It feels like it's been so long. It has been several weeks now that we've been without rainfall. We had a little bit on the radar today, but nothing here in San Antonio. 79 so far today. The 60, 68 was the low this morning. Record is 99 set back in 1937. We're getting nowhere near that this afternoon. Cloud cover keeping temperatures down. We'll take a look at that weekend forecast coming up. KSAT 12 presents another Day of the Dead story, Building the Ofrenda. Ofrenda means offering, and on November 1st, these altars welcome back our loved ones to the world of the living. They're built with many pieces and parts, and each of them has a specific purpose. Fire is one of nature's four elements, so candles are very important for any ofrenda. The glow of the candle is believed to help guide back the spirits to the world of the living. Placed along the altar's bottom level or entrance, they create a welcoming path for your loved one. More are usually placed around the altar to not only illuminate, but to honor the souls of the forgotten. Maybe a great, great tia that you never knew wants to pay you a visit. But don't burn the house down, so keep one of these around. Shaping up to be a nice afternoon, 80 degrees, but we had that cloud cover. That helps a little bit, I it think. It does help a little bit. 80 degrees, I'll take that any day, Justin. Yeah, it's going to be fantastic. I mean, I think it's been a while, too, since we've seen just cloud cover, right? We've seen a lot of sun. It's been a lot of heat over the summer. So it's nice just to have kind of a cloudy day that keeps temperatures down some. I want to show you the numbers across the state. 79 here in San Antonio. You go up to Amarillo, though, they're behind a frontal battery now. It is 59 there, starting to feel a little more like fall, right? 78, Wichita Falls, 81 in Dallas. And you go further north, even colder up there. 44 in Bismarck. And we were looking at some of the numbers this morning. They were below freezing. Right now we're in the 40s, places like Bismarck and Fargo, over towards International Falls, Minneapolis at 45. And there are frost and freeze advisories for parts of the Midwest as temperatures fall below freezing there tonight. Chicago, Des Moines, Indianapolis, Detroit, all places that are going to see some very cold temperatures tonight. We're not feeling that cold yet. And in fact, the front that's bringing this cool air doesn't actually make it through our neck of the woods. But another one next week has potential to move through. And just a second. First off, though, there is some rain around Texas. We're noticing some showers up there around Amarillo and Lubbock. And then some cloud cover and some showers down in the valley south of San Antonio. We're just seeing the clouds really not getting any rain out of this, unfortunately. And as we look a little closer at the clouds here, still pretty thick off to the west of San Antonio around Hondo and Bandera. A few breaks here in San Antonio and then some more thicker clouds out around Gonzales. Looks like there's a lot of rain there. There really isn't. Most of this is not reaching the ground, so maybe a few sprinkles around Gonzales and mostly cloudy skies for you. As we look at live cam, we've got cloudy skies here in town. Uh, a few breaks here and there. 79 at the airport, 79 Stinson, 79 Kelly and Randolph. Across the board there. West Julie winds at 6 miles per hour at the airport. And as far as temperatures go, while well, they are cloud dependent here, uh, underneath these clouds, we're staying in the 70s and low 80s. You go west. It does warm up some where there is more sun in places like Rock Springs and Del Rio. 81 to Braunfels, 79 Seguin, 79 Gonzales, 78 right now Comfort, 78 out there at Lost Maples. And as we talked about earlier, dew points are trying to come up a little bit. So once you get into the 60s, it starts to put you in that muggy territory. You can feel it just a little bit more. I, I think the dew points do come down some tomorrow. But as we get into next week, dew points certainly will come up and it will get uh, pretty muggy around much of South Texas. High temperatures today. We've lowered the numbers down to 86 here in town, 87 Castroville, 82 Ferrox Ranch, high of 82 at Canyon Lake. So uh, pretty close to average for this time of year. And what about that next front? So we talked about this first one that's bringing some cool air in. This doesn't do much for us. We're still going to see 80s over the weekend, 80s on Sunday. But as we get into next week, there's a, a stronger front that tries to push south. 
And yes, we may be near 90 on Wednesday. It gets a little muggy, but we're hoping this front comes through sometime Thursday into Friday. So we still got to work out the timing here, but it will be cooler behind this front, we think. And if we can get enough moisture in place with the front, there are some chances for rain potentially. It's a little too early to say when and where, but this is something to watch late next week. And uh, we've been looking for rain anywhere in the forecast, and I'm glad to see it on the seven day forecast now. 89 degrees tomorrow, 88 on Sunday. We will see more sun over the weekend. Any weekend plans you have look great. It'll be near 90 Monday and Tuesday, partly cloudy, but more humidity. And there are those chances for rain. Small chances right now, 10% Wednesday, 20% on Thursday. Well, I'm glad there's a chance of a front. Um, I don't like that 90 on there in October. Yeah, <laughs> it is going to be a little toasty, I'm afraid, on Wednesday. All right, thank you, yeah. Justin. But the good news here is those temperatures are going to be good for sports. Yes. High right. school football going to be a little cooler tonight, I think, right? Well, is that what I've been saying or not really? It'll be good. Justin okay. does. Yeah. All right. It'll be nice. Yeah. Okay. I won't be as hot <laughs> as usual. Hey, you know what wasn't hot last night? The NFL contest between the Colts and the Broncos. This one saw seven field goals and 12 punts. It was ugly. Plus, Highlands High School loves the fact water polo is now a UIL sport. Coming up. Many coaches say that the real high school football season begins with district play. That's certainly how Steele feels as they open 27-6A play against New Braunfels in our game of the week. KSA 12's Andrew Sealy previews the matchup and some of the best games you can stream on the BGC app tonight. We've got a, a strong little rivalry with this team throughout the uh, past years. Past couple years now have been closed games. A couple years ago, we had to win off our of last play, so I feel like it's going to be that type of atmosphere. Undefeated Steel enters Friday night showdown at Lenhoff Stadium, riding a 10-game winning streak in the all-time series between the Knights and Unicorns. In fact, the last time New Braunfels defeated Steel at all was all the way back in 2007. But this is a brand new season, and the Unicorns have already proven they can play against the state's best. And they're going to fight for four quarters just because, you know, the way they're coached and the pride that they have in their program. And our guys understand that. They, they've, they've seen uh, the fight that New Braunfels has. we, we got a five-week season right now. You have five weeks to uh, win a district championship and earn a spot in the playoffs. Four-man pressure. Let's it fly. Heaves it. And it's East Central with two seconds left. East Central and Judson turned in one of the games of the year last season. This week, the two meet on the gridiron once again. Both teams are two and three coming in and look to start district play on the right foot. And Central Catholic opens up district play tonight against Houston St. Thomas. The Buttons enter with a three and one record while the visiting Eagles are undefeated. Last year, the Buttons beat Houston St. Thomas 35-31. The rematch is going to be right here again at Bob Benson Stadium tonight, one of 10 games you'll be able to stream on the BGC app. For KSAT 12 Sports, I'm Andrew Seeley. Pro Football Coverage, powered by Davis Law Firm. In the NFL, the Colts won the Broncos last night 12-9 in overtime in what some are calling the worst primetime NFL game ever. Fourth quarter, Russell Wilson throws an interception in the end zone. That would later lead to a Colts field goal to force overtime. So the Colts won with zero touchdowns, two interceptions thrown, both to steal night Caden Stearns, and six sacks. Neither side found the end zone. High school water polo is still a work in progress for San Antonio ISD. Seven schools from the school district officially adopted the sport under the UIL umbrella, but only Highlands has the numbers to fill the full team on a regular basis. Prior to the season, the Owls were one of many schools that played water polo for fun. Most of their roster was comprised of members of the swim team, but now athletes from other sports are participating as well. So how different is playing water polo now that it's a UIL sport? A big difference, like a lot of the teams, like the competitions were like friendly competitions, but now like, you know, since we're at UIO, it's a lot much more competitive, which I like. Now that it's UIO, it's making it a lot more real and it's more intense. And then seeing the other teams get just as serious and the other coaches, it's really cool. The bi-district round of the water polo playoffs begin this Monday, October the 10th. That's I like tough. to hear that. Right, it is tough. Things are just going to get more competitive. Absolutely. Love to hear it. Thank you, Larry. Yep. And it's day five at SA Live's Halloween DIY week, and boy, do they have a home project for you. Plus easy costume ideas, so we can go head on over to Mike and Fiona at Market Square. Well, yes, 
with our Halloween DIY week continues with even more spooky fun. <laughs> yes, indeed. And our favorite mom of four, Christy Cuthbert, is going to be here dressing us up in super creative costumes that you can make at home. You don't want to miss these easy to make ideas. And if you want to kick up your decorations and do an amazing cauldron, I am going to show you how to do just that. You can't buy anything that is this, <laughs> this cool at all. Hocus Pocus 2 is out, but you know what's missing? A little ice. We're chatting with the actor who played ice in the original film 30 years ago. Plus, Heart Foods is baking our day with healthy fall recipes. Wait till you try this pumpkin loaf. And first Friday of the month, you know what that means? What? Prizes. Yep, we are spinning the KSAT Insider prize wheel for a brand new winner. Will she win the $2,500 cruise voucher? That's what you're looking for. Keep it right here to find out. And remember, we will be streaming the show today on KSAT.com and our KSAT Plus streaming app, so don't miss it. That and a whole one more coming up on SA Live. These are your top headlines from Cheddar News. Actress Hilary Swank gonna be a mom for the very first time and she's having twins. The 48 year old million dollar baby star made her big announcement on Good Morning America. Swank said being a mother is something she's been wanting for a very long time. She calls it a blessing and a miracle. Meanwhile, Amazon is hiring 150,000 employees in the US that to help manage the holiday rush. Last week, Amazon bumped their average starting pay for warehouse and delivery workers to more than $19 an hour, up from $18 an hour. They're also offering sign-on bonuses ranging from $1,000 to $3,000. And is Netflix more important than food? Well, a new survey finds that Americans would rather cut back on groceries, dining out, and even gas, rather than give up their streaming services like Amazon Prime and Netflix. Two-thirds of consumers are decreasing spending due to inflation, but only a quarter plan to cancel streaming subscriptions. That's according to a recent report by the National Research Group. And that's your Cheddar News Update. I'm Baker Machado coming to you for Cheddar Studios in Lower Manhattan. Okay, we've finally made it into the 80s, so the temperature is starting to warm up a little bit. Uh, still with the cloud cover, though, we probably stay in the mid-80s for highs today. Few sprinkles here and there, but for the most part, just mostly cloudy skies, a little more humidity. This weekend near 90, partly cloudy skies, both Saturday and Sunday. Good for whatever plans you may have. 88 Monday, 89 Tuesday. We will see more humidity next week, and we're hoping, holding out hope, for some rain chances Wednesday and Thursday. There's small rain chances, but a frontal boundary will be moving in sometime late next week. And hopefully that cools us down some, and yes, bring some rain back into the picture because we desperately desperately needed guys. Thank you, Justin. That's all for now from all of us here at KSAT 12. Your family, thank you so much for joining us. And if you want to catch SA Live, we are live streaming that show. You can see Mike and Fiona on KSAT.com and the KSAT Plus app. But right now it's time for some baseball. The Philadelphia Phillies taking on St. Louis Cardinals.